Here we go, seven straight weeks to end the season. No more bye weeks, no more time to relax, time to see what these Ohio State Buckeyes are all about. I'm Doug Maurice. Thank you for joining us here on our weekly Ohio State show. Of course, as you know, the Buckeyes were off last week for the second time this season. They were a little frustrated, I think, about the momentum, maybe slowing down a little bit, but now they're back at it. Um, and, and I think we're finally going to find out really what this team is about along with Bill Landis and Ari Wasserman. We've, we've taken some time to sort of reset during this sort of weird period where they had a bye week, then played twice, then had another bye week. Now the Buckeyes getting ready to host Rutgers at 3.30 on Saturday. Bill, just as, as we talked to Urban Meyer and the coaches and the players on Monday, just sort of how do you think they feel about where things are right now? They're number 13 in both polls. Um, there's still a lot out there in front of them. They're not quite in the national title mix at the moment. How do the Buckeyes feel about where things stand? Uh, I think they, I, I got a sense that they feel, I don't want to say comfortable because comfortable is not the right word, but I think they feel pretty good about where they are now considering what happened in week two. I think when that loss to Virginia Tech happened, uh, there was a lot of doom and gloom, maybe not from them, but certainly around the program about is this season over? And clearly it's not. They're ranked 13th. They're kind of on the cusp of being in the playoff conversation. Uh, so I think there's some optimism that way. But mostly I got kind of a sense of anger. I don't Maybe anger is not the right word either, but they were. I mean, Thomas Powell said yeah, they that were, they're angry that they're not in that top echelon of the talk of the since stuff. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're mad possibly even more now about that Virginia Tech loss because they see what could have been if they were sitting at 5-0 uh, and right now instead of 4-1. and Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I wrote a thing today about, you know, in 2012, Urban Meyer's first year, all we heard about was how tight this team was and, and they figured out the leadership and they had the toast at the Michigan State game and everybody got, you know, together. And then last year they had the leadership committee and they had a bunch of seniors and they were all together. I'm, I'm not buying anything about that like the loss brought them together or anything like that. But the loss did change the context of the year a little bit. It's been 38 days right now, Ari, since that Virginia Tech loss. Are you surprised at all about where we stand, how you feel about this team right now, 38 days removed from that, or how the Buckeyes feel about themselves right now? I'm pretty surprised. I thought this was going to be kind of a long year for Ohio State standards. I, I, after they lost to Virginia Tech, I was looking, and you know there was a chance at the time. Remember, we thought they might lose to Cincinnati. They could have had two non-conference losses. I mean, it's crazy to think that if you go back and you think about this show a month ago or whenever it was before they played Cincinnati, the topic was, is Ohio State, what would happen if Ohio State lost to Cincinnati? Now all of a sudden they've rattled off 50 points in three straight games. They're playing three very manageable opponents in the next three weeks, so there's a lot of talk about stifling of, of momentum, but they have a really big chance to get it back right now. So um, I'm pretty surprised, and I think that that Michigan State game is going to feel and mean a lot more than I thought it might after they lost Virginia Tech. I mean, frankly, it's fun, you know, Every Big Ten game is manageable. I mean, as with, should we talk about the Big Ten? It's the like, kindest who, word I could have used, man. I mean, it really <laughs> is. I mean, you know, you know it's, they feel like this Rutgers team on Saturday maybe is going to give them a little bit uh, of a defensive look. They feel like maybe Rutgers has a quarterback who's maybe going to make some plays. I think much more at least than the Maryland quarterbacks did. Maybe, maybe they I mean, not that Gary Noe has been perfect either. It's, it, it's, you know, you're grasping at things, but... You know, the Penn State defense the next week, maybe we will start to It's crazy to me if you look at the schedule, if you look at how they've done so far, they're 13th, and as Bill said, maybe I don't know if they're on the cusp just yet of the playoff conversation, yeah. but they have that 13th, there's about a month between now and the Michigan State game. Think about how much can change in a month. You've seen how much can change in two weeks. Then if they could beat Michigan State, then they play Minnesota, Indiana, and Michigan. I don't see a game that they're, based on what I've seen so far, and I'm surprised I'm saying this, because earlier on in the year, I thought this was a team that was susceptible to the upset, but I don't think there's only one more game left in the regular season. I think they actually have a shot at really losing. So uh, to sit here and say that right now, that means, and that's indicative of, I think, how much they've transformed in the last month. I mean, I don't think we want to get ahead of ourselves too much. We, we still, you know, you have to, you can only play the schedule you play, but, you know, again, it's hard to judge necessarily too much on who they've played the last three weeks. Uh, I think it's an interesting conversation about the progress of this team in that there were a lot of sure things last year. 
especially once they got rolling. And as people sort of have, have, we've asked them, how do you feel about this year compared to last year? I think people may be forgetting a little bit how before the end of the year last year, before the really close Michigan win and then the two losses, Ohio where State looked awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they were great yeah. for a month. And you knew the offensive line, you knew Braxton Miller, you knew Ryan Chazier, you knew some things. Urban Meyer, when we asked him about this yesterday, was talking about the idea that there are guys on this team who were not big contributors before, who they feel like they found some things out about the past couple weeks. That starts with JT Barrett, but he mentioned a guy like Nick Vanette, who's played well while Jeff Hireman was hurt. He talked about a guy like Michael Thomas, who has emerged as looking like the top receiver. It does feel like, I think you had to have that, it does feel like in certain places that has happened a little bit where guys are starting to reach the point where maybe you can say, well, Michael Thomas isn't really maybe a question anymore. Maybe you know what he's going to do. Yeah, there were definitely a lot of question marks um, coming into the year, not the least of which obviously was quarterback with JT Barron. I think, especially offensively, a lot of those, I don't want to say they've been answered, but I think the questions have been tempered a bit. I think there's not as much um, concern around some positions as there might have been coming into the season. But again, I, I, and I don't, I hate to be like negative about how, how well they play because I have played well, but I, I still, they've played well, but I'm not convinced that that's like the real picture because of who they've played. Do, do you think, do you think Rutgers is a test? No, I don't. I, I don't think Rutgers is a test. And what we saw at Penn State, I don't think Penn State's a test. I don't think Illinois is a test. And the, the thing that we've talked about since the you know beginning of their little run is that if they get by Cincinnati and they did that impressively, they deserve credit for that. They don't, we're going to just be treading water talking about this stuff. The thing that is interesting to me and going back to the original point is, is there a sure thing on this team? Do we know that Michael Thomas is going to catch a touchdown in every game? Do we know that Ezekiel Elliott's going to rush for 115 yards and 4.5 yards or more per carry? I don't think we know any of that yet. I think they've looked impressive. I think three more weeks of it will make it feel more of a sure thing. And last year, like you said, Ohio State had those sure things. I'm not necessarily sure I'm ready to make anybody else like Ohio State offense, especially a sure thing. But every week that goes by where they continue to do what they're doing, it makes you feel more comfortable. And then I think the final exam, really the final exam is going to be November 8th at Michigan State because if they can get by them, and I don't want to get, I still am not sure they're going to, but that's really in my mind the only real test they have left for the regular season. This may be, str this may be strange to try to do now. Um, five games into the 2014 season. But there was a comment in, in one of the um, discussions in one of our stories that I wanted to bring up that made me think about things a little bit differently. And we also, I mean, we certainly invite you to comment in all our stories if you have any comments you want to add to the discussion right now. Um, but the idea of the playoffs aren't the end all be all necessarily for this team right now because they have so many young players and so much of this team is going to be back in 2015. Of course, you never want to take any season for granted. Just when you think, oh, we're targeting this year, then something crazy happens, an injury happens, you know, a, a weird bounce. You have to take each season as it comes. But the idea that if the playoffs don't happen, but they reach a good bowl, they have a good season, they're building for something in 2015, I think it's an interesting point to make because when you look at the starters on this team on offense and defense, 11 of the 22 are freshmen or sophomores. There's only uh, seven seniors among the starters. Yes, you'll miss a guy like Duran Grant at corner. You'll miss a guy like Michael Bennett on the defensive line. Um, you'll miss a guy like Jeff Hireman. But they have other people that will fill in. You know, they're going to lose Devin Smith and Evan Spencer as receivers, but they have depth at receiver. Do you feel like they are building something and although we don't want to get too far ahead, can you see 2014 laying a foundation for what could be coming in 2015 with the young guys, and then we'll get to this with maybe Braxton Miller coming back? Yeah, I thought as, after the Virginia Tech loss, I thought that that was kind of going to be the theme of the season is we'll, we'll get – and that, that was at the time when I thought maybe they'd lose one or two more games and this would be a season where you'd still win nine and you still get to a good bowl, but – it, it kind of was more about laying the foundation for the future and, and getting these young guys experience. I still think it's kind of about that, but I think there's more to play for now than I originally anticipated after that loss in week two. 
but I think it, it's it's kind of human nature to kind of want to look to the future and see how good this team can be in 2015. I mean, you look at almost every skill guy coming back, uh, will be coming back next year. Um, the quarterback situation, which we'll talk about in a bit, is kind of clouded, I would say, at this Cloud, point. That's a good word. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if you look at uh, all, all 22 starting positions, there's a lot coming back for 2015. So I think it's, it's natural to be looking ahead to that a bit. But I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure Ohio State's looking ahead, but I think it's natural for the fan base to be looking ahead. And you, you wrote about this before the season, about how this team in 2014 was even starting to be a little bit more of the Urban Meyer kind of team, especially offensively. And I think we're seeing that. I mean, I guess they're, they're on the path where in 2015, you, just, you even get more of that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because last year, when you play the game of targeting a year, to win a national title and to do everything at the peak. Wasn't last year the perfect example of it? Ohio State had a very veteran team. I thought last year was the year. That was the year, right? Yeah. Um, and their schedule was set up perfectly. They didn't really play any of the top. They, they've, you, you get it. It was right. the year. So I don't want to play that game. I think the goal of where this program is going to be is that every single year, regardless of what Ohio State does, Urban Meyer's vision is that next year they're building for something. Mm -hmm. So right now they've got youthful players, but I think Urban Meyer said it at the beginning of his tenure at Ohio State, if they're doing things right, people are leaving early. Right. And, and they want people coming through, and every year they need to be stacked. So right now it's good to see that they have, you know, 11 sophomores and freshmen. I mean, that means that it's going to be a really good team, for you know, and, and their juniors are probably mostly going to come back. So, of course, they're going to be a lot better next year. Uh, and then we'll talk about Braxton a little bit more. But I think the goal is that when those freshmen and sophomores now leave, that the freshmen and sophomore that step mm -hmm. in are going to be really good too. So I like the idea of building and, and being in a good situation next year. But I think the main goal of the program is that this is a top 10, top 5 national title contender every year, and that's done through recruiting. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot to be gained in East Lansing on November 8th win or lose obviously more if they win yeah but i mean you know last year to play that tough michigan state team and play that tough game that was a new you know it's a neutral site and we know that ohio state fans travel great you know this is going to be prime time at michigan state where they've talked about they need their students and their crowd to do a little bit more but you have to anticipate that the michigan state crowd is going to be nuts for that that's going to be a huge environment and a huge test for everybody on this team and, and I do think that, that you can gain things out of that just because you don't get it every week in the Big Ten. We don't have to remind you of that. That's just not the reality of every week where you're going into a lion's den and thinking, we have a chance to lose this week. Most of the time, Ohio State thinks, yeah, we're going to win.